So in assignment, what we discussed last time is you can have two parts. You have a variable and you can have expression. So ideally what happened, whatever in the expression will be assigned to variable. So when I say A equals 10, we store 10 in the memory and the A will you know, indicate the memory location of 10. So A equals 10 means like we store 10 in the memory and A is the memory reference. Similar to that, if you look at the second one, we say B equals A, right? And in this particular case, we B refers the same as A. So therefore, B is also 10. Third one, you have expression. We know from the previous steps, A is 10, B is 10, and C is 20. Right. So let's look at some examples. Uh, in this particular case, you will notice that we have three assignments. The first one we say greeting. And what we are assigning is a string value. So we assign this string to variable greeting. So when you say print greeting, it will print whatever we store inside the greeting. So we get hello. And if you say type greeting, we say class string, or we can say print type greeting. Right? You will get the same answer. Similar to that, try next to, we can notice that we assign 70 and when you say print in now n is 70 and if you take type n we know that is integer value next last one we say pi equals 3.14 and when you say print pi it say 3.14 if I type type pi, what is the answer? Can you type in the chat? What do you expect if I type type pi? What is the type? Okay, good. I'm getting a couple of answers. Thanks, Dilanka, Sudara. Right, Dilip uh, Rochira, thanks for sharing your answers with me. Right, uh, okay. So let's move it on the next one. So as you correctly mentioned in the chat, so type pi will give us a float because it's a number with a decimal point. Okay, so I hope you understand so far. Right, so let's look at the statements. Now, it's statements means we write some expressions. So when we write expressions, uh, you can have just numbers, what we mean by combination of values. For example, you can use Python as a calculator, right? You can just type one plus one, you immediately get an answer. You can see. Simply, the expression contains addition of two values. And then we can have two variables. Let me say A equals 10. Let me say B equals 20. So when I say A plus B, we know now a is assigned to 10, B is assigned to 20. So we are getting 30, right? Okay, good. Any guesses about the last one? Third one is functions. In Python, we use a lot of functions. 
right? Right now I didn't explain, but can you guess what is the output of this? I didn't explain. So how do I know about this function? Yes, it says, if I press enter, it says five. But what is five? So let's take a help function. Remember our help and type len. And it will tell about what len is. It says return the number of items in a container. So let me explain a little bit more here. So here, hello is a string, which means you have a sequence of characters. So what it means is how many characters in the word hello. So we have five characters. So len stands for length. As Situmin correctly said, len stands for length, right? Simply it will give you the number of items in the container. So it's a string meaning sequence of characters and it tells us how many characters are there. So answer is five. So I hope you got the answer. Whenever you don't know something, make sure you, you try with help function. Okay, so we'll move on to um, understanding some operators and operands. Now the term operator and operands are used. Uh, for example, let me take example. We have two plus three. So the plus is the operator, right? We call an operator. Plus is operator. Then two and three, they are called operands. Right? So therefore, they are called special tokens operators. So the plus is a token. So it represents the addition. So similar to that, we have tokens for multiplication, division. So we want to know what symbols we use. So let me list what we call arithmetic operations. Arithmetic operators means these are the ones we use for the calculations. I think first one is clear to you, plus meaning addition. For example, 10 plus three which means you add 10 and three together. Then the second one we call subtraction or we call minus sometimes. 10 minus three, you talk about the subtraction. Third, multiplication. If you put 10 and three, it means you multiply 10 by three. Last one, we will discuss these three. 10, you divide by 3. We call the division. So let's try this. So I'm going to get my shell. Let me type. So I'm taking, you know, 10. 10 plus 3. So it will say 30. 10 minus 3. It says seven, 10 multiplied by three, you can guess 30. Then 10 divided by three, this is interesting. So why I'm saying is interesting means we know what the answer is. What is the answer? If you did divide 10, 10 by three, yes, what is the answer? Okay. If you know mathematics, you expect 3.33, 3, 3, right? So that should be repeated. But if you carefully look at at the end, you will see number five, which is not correct, right? This is not correct, although we get this. 3.3333, 3, 3, 3, 3, that should be the correct answer. So it's a never ending number. But let me explain why we are getting five here, because in computers, we have a very limited space we allocate for numbers. We call it, we have allocated fixed number of bits to represent numbers. Therefore, sometimes you cannot get exact answer in computers, especially with protein point numbers. So that's the reason why we are getting answers like this. 
but you don't have to really worry about it in situations like this when when the accuracy is not very very important for example our calculation usually we limit to two or three decimal places so when you take two or three decimal places usually we get the correct answer so make a note of this and later on you will learn how numbers are stored inside the computer especially fractional numbers okay so that about a division so let me explain the next one next one we call exponentiation which means the power so what that means like for example if i put exponentiation with 10 and 3 we have two stars and 3 so this is to say that 10 to the power 3 yes what is 10 to the power 3 that's 1000 right so 10 to the power 3 means 10 into 10 into 10 that's 1000 excellent next we call integer division okay let me explain this integer division means you divide okay sorry you divide 10 by 3 and take the integer part of it you divide 10 by 3 and you will get an answer we know that is 3.333 but take only the integer part what is the integer part what is the whole number? 3, right? So we are getting 3 here. If you divide 10 by 3, we are getting 3.33 something. The integer part of it is 3. Okay, you got it, right? Good. The last one we call module operator or mod operator. So this one means 10 mod 3. We used to say mod. 10 mod 3. Right? So meaning that you divide 10 by 3, the remainder. You divide 10 by 3, the remainder is, yes, okay, 1. So I hope you understood all the arithmetic operations, operators, yes? Any questions, anything that is not clear in this slide? Please let me know in the chat. If you want me to explain again, let me know in the chat. Okay, good. So let's move on. Right. Now, for example, in calculations. Okay. Uh, let me explain one more time the last one. Module operator. Yes, there were some comments. So the last one is remained. Mod operator means remained. So what this means, we when we speak, we say 10 mod 3. The meaning of this operation is you divide 10 by 3, the remained. The higher to name the right? So 10 divided by 3, the remain is 1. So let me give another example. 10 divided by 2, the remainder. Yes, 0, right? Okay, 4 divided by 3, what is the remainder? Okay, so you know now, now what, what model operation is. Okay, good that you ask question because I think it's uh, clear everyone's any doubts. Okay, good. And thanks for asking questions. Right. The next thing that I want to discuss is whenever you perform operations, we have to be very careful. We should know how exactly things are happening. Right. So when you do mathematics and if somebody asks, what is the answer? If I put 2 plus 3 into 4 in maths, and if I add 2 plus 3, that is 5, and 5 into 4, if I say 20 as the answer, is it is it correct? No, right? No. Okay, if I if I first add this one, it's it's wrong. So first I have to perform this operation. Right? And we get the answer. 
M, then you do the addition. Exactly. So there's a order of operations which we need to follow in in programming is also the same, right? So for example, you have to first perform any parentheses, then you have to perform exponentiation, then multiplication and division. So exactly. And then addition and subtraction. Okay, so let me ask a question. So if we have two plus three, minus four, which one I should do first? Is it addition or is it subtraction? Okay, so if I put like this, two minus three plus four, which one you are going to do first? Ah, okay. So let me explain. Addition and subtraction, we say they are in the same procedures, which means you can do which, which one you want. But usually there's a practice. If you have same precedent, usually in computing, we say you go from left to right. So therefore, in this particular case, we might form addition first. In this particular case, we might perform subtraction first. The idea is if the two operations or two operators are in the same precedence, we should go from left to right. Okay, good. So that's what you need to know, right? So everything in same precedence, you have to go from left to right. Okay, so same goes with multiplication division if you have multiplication and division in the same expression so whatever comes first when you go from left to right you have to perform okay except except okay remember except one case here what is the one case when you have exponent what do you mean by exponent we have two right into three, sorry, we have two stars. If you have like this, what do you mean by this? Very important to understand. In this particular, except for this case. Now, this is also the same procedure, right? If you argue with me, we have the same operator, exponent. But, the, but what you need to remember is this is exception, right? So what this means, the first, it has to perform this. That means 3 to the power 2. What is 3 to the power 2? That is 9, right? So this is 9. Then 2 to the power 9. What is 2 to the power 9? So it's like 2 to the power 3 to the power 2. This is how you should evaluate. So make a note of this very important. So when you have same precedence, usually we go from left to right, except when we have exponent value. If you have exponent value, that means powers, you should evaluate from right to left. Make a note of this. Okay. So let me explain this with our, okay. So this is what I want to explain, right? So I'm going to say two to the power three to the power two. What is the answer? So I told you this is same procedures, but first you have to evaluate this one. Three to the power two means three into three, that is nine. 2 to the power 9, 2 into 2 into 2, you have to do 9 times. You will see this is 512. Right? So, if you want to perform the first two operations, then you have to put a bracket like this. So, brackets are used for that. What is the answer for this?
So when you put brackets, you, you change the priority. So that means you first work on inside the brackets. What is inside the bracket? 2 to the power 3. 2 to the power 3 means 2 into 2 into 2. That is 8. Then 8 to the power 2. That means 8 into 8. That is 64. Okay. You got me, right? Yes? Shall we have some exercises then? Okay, good. So, small exercise for you. So, let me explain first how the last one works. So, we have 10 divide by 2 plus 3. Right? And then we have multiply by 5. And then we have exponent that is power to 2. And then this will to the power 0 0.5. So this is what we have. Right? If I go one by one, so we have to first work on the brackets, right? So that means we have to first work on this. 2 plus 3 is 5, right? So we have 10 divided by 5 multiplied by 5 to the power 2 to the power 0.5. Now, if you look at these operators, we know by the precedence, we have to take the exponent, that means to the power. So this is 5 to the power 2. That means 5 into 5, 25. So we left with 10 divided by 5, multiplied by 25, right? into 0 0.5. Now, same procedures, therefore, first divide by 5. So, remember in Python, when you divide 10 by 5, it's 2, but actually it's 2.0, right? It will take it as a floating point number, very important. Make a note of that. And you multiply by 25, Still, you have bracket to the power 0 0.5. 2 into 25, that is 50. Right? And you have 0 0.5. What do you mean by to the power 0 0.5? If anybody knows, tell me. That is square root. So the answer is, if you don't know, square root of 50. So I will explain what this is. So let me take my, this. So I'm going to get into this side. Okay, so what we need to type is 10 divided by 2 plus 3 into 5 to the power 2 to the power 0 0.5. Answer is 7.071 something. So this means the square root of 50. So for example, square root of 4 is 2. So that means... 2 to the power 2 is 4. That means square root of 4 is 2. So similar to that. So square root of 50 is this number. What it means if you multiply this number by same number, you should get 50. 
you have seen now 50.0001 and I explained earlier why we are getting this answer inside the computer. We have a limited number of bits and we cannot exactly represent numbers in floating point. So that's why we are getting this answer. But when you take like one or two decimal places, we get the correct answer that is 50. I hope uh, you understood how the calculations were done in Python. And, and with that said, we will conclude our you know, slide for the first um, session. And then I was supposed to finish up to this point. Right? Okay, let's clear this out. So let me move on to a today's session. Right. Today's slides. Okay. Right. Okay. Are we clear about working with numbers? At least we, we knew the theory, right? Yes. Are we all clear? Okay. Good. So now, if somebody says whether these operators work with string values, what do you mean by string values? For example, if somebody asks whether we can perform this operation, what do you think? Okay, there's a question from Netra. Every division output is a float? Yes, yes. If you divide by something, you will get a floating point number. It's it's what I have to ask. So if you try to do this, this is an error, right? You might think that, okay, 15 minus 1, 14. No, it's not like that. Python takes these two as a two different values. One is a string value because you have single quotes. The other one is a integer. So therefore, Python will contain, uh, complain. So you see some message in red color saying that there's an error because you cannot perform this operation. Okay. Similarly, you cannot, uh, you know, multiply string with another one, right? So you can notice that. So typical operations are not possible with the string values. But there are two exceptions. For example, if you have two strings, make a note of this. If you have two strings and if you are using a plus operator, remember, you have two strings and you have plus operator. And this works, we call concatenation. Concatenation means if you have two strings and if you have plus operator, it glue together. Right, I will give you a small exercise. No, I mean, question. If I have 10 plus 20 as strings, what is the answer? Remember, these are not numbers. It will treat it as string values. We have 10 and 20 plus the operator will glue together. Glue means it's as, as if 1020. There's no space. Okay, you got my point? Okay, good. And there's another one. If you multiply a string with a number, very interesting. So we have one, it's a string. You multiply by three and see what happens. It repeats. This is called repetition. So to summarize what we have learned in this slide, usually arithmetic operations will not work with string values. But there are two exceptions. If you have two strings and if you're trying to add, we call it a concatenation operation where it glue together. Similarly, if you have a string value and if you have a number that is the integer value, if you multiply, then it's called repetition. So it repeats. Now, if you might ask me like why you need these operations, I mean, very important. Now, early days when we do not have graphical user interfaces, 
This is how we use prographics. For example, I can have a dash line like this. Think about in early days where you want to draw lines. So if you use underscore, then you will get actually line. You see? So therefore, though it's not used, so in some cases it will be very useful as well. Right? Okay, any questions from this slide? Are you all uh, clear up to this point? Yes. Remember, we are going to have a quiz today and then uh, I want everybody to uh, answer correctly. Yes, okay, good. Let's see. Huh? I'm, I'm going to have a quiz at the end. Right, good. So let's move on. So what we just finished is how this operation on string values. And we discuss. there are two exceptions. When you use plus, it works concatenation and multiplication string with the integer, then we call it a repetition, okay? Right. Next one, very important again. Now, we have discussed from the beginning that Python supports different formats. We discuss integer, we discuss float, we discuss strings. Sometimes we want to, you know, exchange or convert in between. For example, let's say we have some integer value, sorry, we have a floating point value, float, and we want to convert into int. So if I say in 3.14, can you guess what will happen? What will happen? Int is a converter function, we call it. And within bracket, we put a floating point number, 3.14. So int means integer. It try to convert this number to integer value. So can you guess what will happen? What might happen? Okay, as you can guess, it will give you only the integer part of it. Okay, you got my point, right? So, give me the answer for this. Um, what about this? Now, Nathan asked why when we type 10 plus 20, there's no space because spaces, this is called concatenation. It glued together. There's no space. In previous one also, if you look at Nathan carefully, banana and nut bread, I had the space in the beginning. That's why there's a space. Right? So banana and there was a space in the beginning. That's why we have a space here. Otherwise, it glued together. In print, we discussed there's a space in between. That's a different thing. So plus operator, it just glue. There's no space. Nathan, I hope you understand. Okay, right, good. So floor three, any guesses? So it's an integer value, try to convert it to read. Okay, good, you understood. What about this? Exactly, some of you have already guessed. So three will represent as a, a you know, a string value, but this will not work always, huh? remember. This will not work always. For example, if I put int 3.14, what do you think? What will happen? It says it's an error because you cannot, Python cannot predict exactly what's inside this, right? So you have to be very careful. 
when we use convert function, you need to understand how it happens. Okay. So there are places where this might not work. So why don't you try this? So here are some examples. Just try this. And when you finish, just raise your hands. Then I'll... So if you want to increase the size of these fonts, like what I did here, you have to go to Options and click on Configure Idle. And here we have some fonts. Even you can change the fonts. And here's a place we call font size. Click on the size. You can increase. Let me put 40. If you say, OK, so now you can see very clear, right? So let me reduce the size again. Options, Configure Idle. I will choose back again my original font size that is 22. So Dilank, I hope you got the answer. Right. Uh, let me go to direct questions form. Uh, for example, if you have something like this int and you have something like 23 bottles. I mean, it's not direct what you have. You have a string and you have inside numbers and letters and Python. It's not direct that you can convert. What do you expect the answer is? Is it 23 or is it something else? So it's not clear. So we will get an error here. Right? But if you have like, like this, it'll work, right? This will work. Because it's direct 23, it's a string represent, but it can directly extract this. But this might not work. You see, so, so make a note of this. When you have a direct conversion, it's possible. Otherwise, it's not. So if it is float, it's working. So if it is 23.0, yes, this is working. No error, right? Right, I'm going to discuss very important part. Um, I need your full attention, uh, how to get input from the user and how to format output the way we want, right? Very important uh, couple of slides we are going to discuss, right? First thing, how to interact with the user. Now we are going to develop programs and we need to request user to enter details, right? The first thing I'm going to discuss how to get something from the user. So there's a function called input function. So if you type just input, input like this, this is called input function. And if you just press enter, you can notice that it's just waiting for user's input. So this is the prompt. We have three angle brackets. We typed input. And now you can see a blinking cursor. Wait for user's input. So let me type my name. Right. Um, I will type like this. Right. So whatever I type, you can notice, it will take it as a string value, right? But I didn't know like what to type because since I have put input, I type my name, I knew it, right? So therefore, when you type input, make sure you type some message, enter you. 
So notice that I put a space here. So when I press enter, you can notice that whatever the message that I put inside input will be displayed now. Now user knows what to enter. So I can type some path, okay? Right. You see, uh, if you use input like this, it's not very useful because you can use once, you cannot do anything for what user input. So therefore, usually whatever we get from the user, we usually assign into a variable. So therefore, I'm going to modify this. I will say input, enter your name. So what happens now this time? Whatever I will type will be saved as n. Yes, agree. No output, but we know that whatever we input saved as n, right? So what is the output of this? If I say print n, what is the output? It's some path, right? Because we store whatever use enters, what we don't know. In my case, I type some path because of that in is some path. When I say print in, at some path. Because we saved in a variable, we can type anything the way we want. For example, I can say hello. So if I type this, what will happen? It says hello somewhat, right? Because we know now print first one hello and n is somewhat, right? Good. Okay. What about this one? What about this? Make a notice that I put a comma. So how it comes? Sampa, we have a comma. We say Hawaii. Okay, good. You got now, right? So remember how the way I have, uh, you know, typed it. Okay. So you notice now the importance of use of input function, putting a message inside the input and save it in a variable. Okay, good. What about if I want to save a number, right? For example, if I say in, input, enter a number, what happens now? Yes. If I press 10, we know n is 10, right? Print n, it's 10. What about n plus 10? Will it 20? No. I mean, come on, come on. What we have discussed, you forgot. Whatever we enter, we'll take it as a string value. Remember? You don't remember this. Just try type it. And it will say it's a string. If you just type n, it's string. So if you type n plus 10, we'll get an error. Okay, remember, make a note of this. When you use an input function, whatever user types, it could be a number, it could be a string, could be a float, whatever it is, it will take it, will take it as a string value. Very, very important. Therefore, you have to be very careful about when you are getting numbers. So the trick that I'm going to use is, I'm going to use input and I will type enter number. But what I can do is I can use a converter function. I will type int. What happens here now? When I put int, what will happen? Yes, whatever user enters, 
will be convert into integer value, right? Okay, so for example, if I put 10, this time n is 10, type n is integer. Now, can we type n plus 10? Yes, of course, it works now. So are we clear up to this point? Okay, let me summarize. Input function. Whenever we want to get something from the user, you should use input function. Whatever the message, you can put inside the input. But remember, whatever user enters will be saved as a string value. Therefore, right, therefore, you have to use convert function. There was a good question from Navodhya. What will happen when we enter float for that, sir? Okay, let's try. There was a question. Okay, I'm going to uh, run the same one. And I will put 2.3. You see what will happen. Why? Remember converter function. If you put 2.3, it will take as a string. So can we convert? 2.3, that was a question. Remember, we discussed this early. So we get an error. Therefore, if you want to float in point number to input, we have to change this. Change this to flow. If you want to allow user to, en user to enter anything you want, use flow. Because this could support 2.3, no issue. And even this could support Two, no issue, right? So make a note of this. So input as a summary can be used to get input, user input. Whatever user enters will be uh, taken as a string value. If you want to take numbers, use converter function. If you want to convert it to integer value, use int. If you want to use for the float, use float. Okay, are we clear up to this point? Yes. Shall we move forward? Anything which is not very clear? Or you want me to explain again? Okay, thanks. So with that, we finish about discussing the input. Right, now let me discuss the output. We already discussed how to use print function, isn't it? You can learn more about print by just using help print, right? So let me explain with uh, some examples. Right, so to explain how we can use print, I'm going to use some examples. The examples are, I'm going to say, I'm going to use A, which is a variable, 28, B, I will say 50. You know what happens with this? If you say print A, what will happen? What is the outcome? You already know. If you say print A, the answer is, yes, we know it's 20. What about this? Print. A comma B. If I say print A comma B, what is the outcome? We have 28, that is A. We have 15. And in between, we have a space. Remember? Remember? If you type help print, this will tell you. Because the separation is space, right? Yes, okay. Okay, if I type this print, A comma B comma separation, the values are separated by commas. If I type like this, what happens now? Okay, so what we are going to say is we have a 28, 
we have 15 in between instead of a space now we have a comma okay what about this are we getting 28 into 15 or the result what do you think will it multiply no 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 it will not multiply it will just put in between not the result not the result instead of a space we put a star i mean it will not execute make a note of this very important okay right the last one i want you to think about this if i type this a plus we have a string and b and we are getting an error okay what is the problem here you have to think about what we have discussed early right a is an integer value then we have a string we have again integer can we can we perform this operation no you can't right no you can't you will get an error because you have integer values as well as string values either you have to convert everything into a string if you want to do something yes you have to convert if you want i'm not going to do that but you have to put into a some convertible format okay so i think you got the idea okay i'm going to explain the next one blank line okay for that i'm going to create a new window because i want a new file so i'm going to click file new file and what i'm going to do is i'm going to type sltc and programming concepts but in a separate file right so i'm going to first print like this print sltc then print uh programming concepts right let me save this save i told you this is a script mode so i'm going to go to uh my codes october 2024 we have wrote one file early so therefore i'm going to make it program number two okay so when i run run module what will happen when i say run run module what will happen so this is a separate file remember so what happens if i select run run module what happens I will explain again. So I get a new file, type two print statements, save it, and I'm going to run. What happens? When you run this, it will execute here. See what happens? When I say run, run module, it says restart, it will run the program too. And here is the output. We have SLTC and programming concepts. Okay. Right. If you want a space in between, you can just say print. This is one way to do this. Without any value here, if you do this and if you run, you will notice we have a SLTC space and then programming concepts. There are other ways that you can do the same thing, which I'm not going to discuss right now, maybe later on. Okay. Okay, just to summarize the slide, we discuss various ways to use print function. Right? So that's what we discussed. Are we clear up to this point? Yes.
good right shall we move to the more difficult part there shall we move to the more difficult part okay right so let me uh, let me move on to the next one right Uh, now I am not very sure about what exactly you want. If you want to print like two lines, remember we use multi-line string. Is that what you want to do? Like triple single quotes? Right. I will get back again. So let me explain very important one. And this is the, the last slide for today, right? So we discuss input, we discuss basic output. Now we are going to discuss something called formatted output. Now formatted output means when we are printing something, we need sometimes exactly the way we want, right? Sometimes we have to decide how many decimal points that we need. Right right now, when we say 10 divided by 3, we will get 3.33333. I mean, you don't need that many number of decimal places. So we need to adjust when we want to print something. So this is called formatted output. In Python, there are three formatted outputs. We are going to discuss one today. Right? Make sure you understand this. And this is the oldest one. What has happened over the years is they have introduced three ways and this is the first one. So I'm going to explain the formatted output using module operator. Okay. And simply, um, there are various ways that we can represent. I'm, I'm going to put the syntax like this. So you have a formatting string. You can see this as a string. You have uh, some formatting instructions as a string value. And then we have a mod operator and we have a number. And this is the format that we are going to find. Let's see whether you can understand. Right, I'm going to get the shell only. Right, so let me take a number first. Let me take a variable. I'm going to say this variable A is 1, 2, 3, 4, point, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. And when we say print A, what will happen? It will print exactly as it is. So this part we already know. Now let me explain, right? This formatting instruction. So this formatting is something like this. You have a string, then this operator, and then the value. And this is how we will format it. So depending on what we put inside here, we get different formatting, different ways. Okay, that's what I'm going to explain. For example, if you would represent this as a floating number, we will put like this. This character F is for float. So if I just say F, this is how it represents. It will, it'll, uh, you know, it will print it as a floating point number. Okay, let me explain the one more thing. If you want to limit number of decimal places, let's say two decimal places, we put point two. This point two F means we represent number as a floating point number, but we limit the number of decimal places to two. And this is how we are getting. So it will round off because we won't limit to two decimal places. We have five, six, seven. Seven is more than five. So it will add one. So we will get one, two, three, four point five seven. So if you want three decimal places, what should I do? Exactly. So the formatting instruction we have to change, we'll put three. 
Okay. Understood? Okay, good. One more thing now. If you want to control all the total number of digits you are allocating, you put that before the decimal point. Let me put seven. So what this number seven means, the total number of digits you are going to allocate. Okay. It says seven. So there's seven start from here. I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You got my point? Okay, if you have a number before the decimal point, what it means, you allocate the total number of digits. So if you put 12, what will happen there? If you put 12, what will happen? You will have spaces in the beginning. So let's count total numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You got my point? You don't need it, but if you were to display something in the same line, Usually, we want to print decimal lines in the same line, isn't it? Okay, so you can control. Are we clear up to this point? Okay, good. Now, I'm going to go back to here again. So, if you want to print some message, let's say this is a price, and I want to say, okay, price in rupees so i can add it so whatever you add inside the string will print it as it is this is the formatting instruction for this number so the output of this is something like this price rupees and then number we will limit to two decimal places so that's what it means so we will get this Are we clear up to this point? Okay, last one there. Last one. If you want to represent more than one number, this is how we represent. So I will go back to the beginning. We have a print. And then we have the string module operator. When you have more than one number, you have to comma separate inside the brackets like this. And so let me type some numbers. A is a number. The other number I will directly type like this. So if you have more than one number, you put it inside the bracket and you comma separate it. Now here, you have to have two strings. Now, first number, I'm going to limit to two decimal places. And I will put end. The second number, I will make it to one decimal place. So if I press enter, this is what I'm getting. So now you can notice. This is the format instruction, module operator. And we have two numbers, therefore we put inside the bracket and we put comma separate. Yes, Lamidu, it's rounded. Yes, of course. So since we have two numbers, we have two number formats. We will say the first number, we want to make it two decimal places. Second number, we will say one decimal place. So what happens? The first number is A, so we will get 1, 2, 3, 4, point five seven. Second number, one decimal place. When you make it one decimal place, you will see we have a 4 here, so it will be 3.1. That's all what I want to discuss. If it is not clear, let me explain.
Okay. Let me go one more time. So we have A. This is by number A. Okay. So in this one, we discuss formatting instructions using module operator. So formatting can be done with this, like this. So within the string, we have to tell how to represent the number. If you would represent the number as a floating point, we put F. If you want to limit it to two decimal places, we put 0.2. So when you say 0.2F, the number will be restricted to two decimal places. Sitamini, is it clear? So if floating point number, 0.2 is two, two decimal places. Chaturo, is it, is it clear to you? When you say 0.2, it limit to two decimal places. 0.3, three decimal places. Okay, good. Next one. If you put a number front, if you put seven, for example, that number represents how many digits you allocated to represent the number. So if you put seven, and if you count from the beginning, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It allocated seven digits to represent the number. Sarathi, yes, you are correct. So therefore, if I put 12 here, it uses total 12 digits to represent the number. So for example, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Sitamini, are we clear now? Chatura? Okay, good. Right. That's all for today. Thank you. Right. So let's. See how far you have learned today, right? So I'm going to have uh, 